Good morning, and welcome to worship with Forsyth Presbyterian Church. If you are worshiping with us on YouTube, I invite you to download the bulletin from the link which is in the video description so that you can more fully participate in this worship service with us. If you are worshiping on our Facebook page at Forsyth PCUSA, there is also a link in a separate post to the bulletin. This morning, I wish to extend a special greeting to all the mothers who are watching with us this morning and worshiping together, and to all those who have mothered so many, regardless of whether or not they gave birth to them. We are grateful for you. We honor you. We thank you. Friends, the Easter season continues, so I invite you to join with me in the Easter greeting. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Friends, God calls us to worship, so I invite you to join with me in the call to worship, which is responsive and printed in the bulletin. Throughout the bulletin, when there is a portion of the liturgy which is in bold, I invite you to say that. Jesus said, do not let your hearts be troubled. We long for abiding peace and friendship that renews our souls. Jesus says, I am the way and the truth and the life. We seek wisdom that endures and guidance for our journey. Jesus says, where I am, there you may be also. We come to encounter Christ. Let us worship our God. Our first hymn this morning is Christ the Lord is Risen Today. Please join with me in singing. whoever believes in Christ will not be put to shame. Confident in this promise, let us confess our sin before God and one another using the prayer which is printed in the bulletin. Let us pray together saying, 
Lord, we confess that we cover our ears to your commandments, choosing instead to carry out plans that cause suffering and inflict pain on others. We neglect to heed your instructions to care for the vulnerable and uphold the weak. Out of fear and selfishness, we grab and hoard resources meant to be shared and distributed. In this season of uncertainty, we are tempted to seek control through self-protection rather than surrendering ourselves to you and trusting your promise to never abandon us. Forgive our unwillingness to listen to your word and do your work. Hear our confession and grant us mercy. Amend our ways and help us to walk more closely with you. And God's children said, Amen. Sisters and brothers, once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Friends, let us now sing together the Gloria Patri. Please join with me as we offer together our prayer for illumination, which is printed in the bulletin. Let us pray. Lord, as we listen to your holy word, open our hearts to the power of your spirit. Call us out of darkness and lead us into your marvelous light. Amen. Our first reading this morning comes from the Gospel of John. Chapter 14, verses 1 through 14. Let us listen here for the word from the Lord. Jesus said, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him, and you have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? 
The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact, will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask for anything, I will do it. Our second reading this morning is Psalm 31. Let us also listen here for the word from the Lord. In you, O Lord, I seek refuge. Do not let me ever be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me. Incline your ear to me, rescue me speedily. Be a rock of refuge for me, a strong fortress to save me. You are indeed my rock and my fortress. For your name's sake, lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net that is hidden for me, for you are my refuge. Into your hand I commit my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord, faithful God. You hate those who pay regard to worthless idols, but I trust in the Lord. I will exalt and rejoice in your steadfast love because you have seen my affliction. You have taken heed of my adversities and have not delivered me into the hand of the enemy. You have set my feet in a broad place. Be gracious to me, O Lord, for I am in distress. My eye wastes away from grief, my soul and body also. For my life is spent with sorrow and my years with sighing. My strength fails because of my misery and my bones waste away. I am the scorn of all my adversaries, a horror to my neighbors, an object of dread to my acquaintances. Those who see me in the street flee from me. I have passed out of mind like one who is dead. I have become like a broken vessel, for I hear the whispering of many, terror all around, as they scheme together against me, as they plot to take my life. But I trust in you, O Lord. I say, you are my God. My times are in your hand. Deliver me from the hand of my enemies and persecutors. Let your face shine upon your servant, Save me in your steadfast love. Do not let me be put to shame, O Lord, for I call on you. Let the wicked be put to shame. Let them go dumbfounded to Sheol. Let the lying lips be stilled that speak insolently against the righteous with pride and contempt. Oh, how abundant is your goodness that you have laid up for those who fear you and accomplished for those who take refuge in you, in the sight of everyone. In the shelter of your presence, you hide them from human plots. You hold them safe under your shelter from contentious tongues. Blessed be the Lord, for he has wondrously shown his steadfast love to me when I was beset as a city under siege. I had said in my alarm, I am driven far from your sight but you heard my supplications when I cried out to you for help. Love the Lord, all you his saints. The Lord preserves the faithful, but abundantly repays the one who acts haughtily. Be strong and let your heart take courage, all you who wait for the Lord. Our third reading this morning comes from the first letter of Peter. Chapter 2, verses 2 through 10. So let us also listen here for the word from the Lord. Like newborn infants, longing for the pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow into salvation. 
if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, a royal, sorry, to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in scripture, see, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you then who believe, he is precious. But for those who do not believe, the stone that the builder rejected has become the very head of the corner, and a stone that makes them stumble and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobeyed the word, as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I've recently started watching the third season of the Netflix original series, The Crown. Episode three, follows the response of the royal family to a devastating mining accident in Aberfan, Wales, in which 140,000 cubic yards of spoil slipped down the side of the hill and onto a portion of the village, including the Panglass Junior School. 116 children and 28 adults died. The episode depicts Prince Philip attending the mass funeral. He hears hundreds of villagers, devastated, grieving, and angry, sing together the hymn, Jesus, lover of my soul. The entire episode asks the question, how do people respond to disaster? from the miners who dug their children's bodies out of the spoil-covered school, to the queen and her family, and the prime minister and his cabinet, the responses vary widely. Yet this is historical fact. When the village came together to bury their dead, they sang a hymn proclaiming God as their refuge. Episode 4 depicts a conversation between Prince Philip and his mother, Princess Alice, who struggled with mental health problems and suffered greatly under the guise of 20th century care. She eventually converted to the Eastern Orthodox Church, took orders as a nun, and spent decades of her life serving the poor and those in ill health through the order of Christian Sisterhood of Martha and Mary, which she founded. In the episode, Princess Alice asks her son, how is your faith? Philip replies, dormant. That's not good, she says. Let this be a mother's gift to her child, the one piece of advice. Find yourself a faith. It helps. No, not just helps. It's everything. It struck me deeply as we wade through our own disaster that both the village of Aberfan and Princess Alice respond to their great suffering with great faith. 
As I talked with many of you this week, I heard your own stories of struggle with the continued isolation, fear for your physical health, and the economic cost of this pandemic. I heard your frustration with the leaders whose decisions you disagree with. But I was deeply and repeatedly moved by how you did not allow your struggle, disappointment, fear, or frustration to control you. I heard about how one of you is making masks by the batch and not knowing who will need them when you start, when you finish, you find a group in need of such protective equipment presents itself to you. I heard about how some of you have continued to support your students, trying to help them learn under arduous and unlooked for circumstances. I heard how some of you continue to see patients and how difficult it is to provide the best care in these strange times. I heard how some of you are helping family members in new ways, expanding a business to meet new needs, picking up groceries for older relatives and friends, sharing the childcare responsibilities in new ways, and spending more time together as a family. I heard about how proud you are of your seniors who have had to complete their degree requirements in such strange times and the ways in which you have helped them celebrate. Through everything, I have heard how you are remaining hopeful and grateful and how this hope and this gratitude flows from your faith and your love for one another. Whether it's a devastating disaster, the torment of mental illness, or the struggle of our own strange times, First Peter reminds us this morning that faith is everything. Faith is mother's milk for the nursing infant. Faith is being grounded in a living stone, which will never crack or shake because it is unlike all other rock. Faith is letting God take our experiences and use them to shape us into spiritual houses. Faith is responding to God's election by proclaiming God's goodness to the world. Psalm 31 also reminds us that faith is everything. Faith is trusting we are not isolated in our affliction and that our suffering does not go unseen. Faith is putting our trust in God who is love and not in our own individual power, broken and limited as it is. Faith is facing fear with strength and courage, not because it is easy, but because God is present with us. I know from our many conversations together that our faith does not all look the same. For some of us, our faith is grounded in our determination to love and serve our neighbors. For some of us, our faith is grounded in our determination to work for a more just, merciful, and equitable world. For some of us, our faith is grounded in a moment of rescue. We were drowning, and then unexpectedly, a friend tossed a lifeline and reeled us in, and we found God's inspiration and strength powering the entire enterprise. Still, for others of us, our faith is grounded in the moments of deep relief, when the worst was not realized. And despite all previous evidence to the contrary, we found ourselves or our loved ones suddenly recovering and safe. And yet, for still others of us, our faith is grounded in moments of sudden new insight, found in scripture and made possible by our intentional study together. Yet for all the many variations within our community, faith rooted in love 
grounds us all. God's love is the solid rock on which we can stand amidst the anxiety, frustration, and struggle of our times. And you, my dear ones, are standing. You are not sinking. God is our rock and our refuge. Grounded in this living stone, we will continue to be shaped into spiritual houses, a holy priesthood, God's own people, in order that our faith, in, grounded in love, may be a witness to the mighty acts of God who calls us out of darkness and into God's marvelous light. Because every time you act with compassion, with mercy, with care, with hope, or with love, you are bearing witness, and you are being a witness to how God is acting mightily in our world today. Whenever we act from a place of love, we are how God is acting in the world today. And all our loving actions add up to mighty work. Thank you for welcoming me into your stories. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your action. May God, our rock and our refuge, continue to ground our faith so God's love may flow more fully into the world. Amen. Friends, having heard the word proclaimed, let us now sing the hymn, My Hope is Built on Nothing Less. Let us now affirm what it is we believe using a portion of the brief statement of faith, which is printed in the bulletin. Let us say together, we trust in God, whom Jesus called Abba, Father. In sovereign love, God created the world good, 
and makes everyone equally in God's image, male and female, of every race and people, to live as one community. But we rebel against God, we hide from our Creator. Ignoring God's commandments, we violate the image of God in others and ourselves, accept lies as truth, exploit neighbor and nature, and threaten death to the planet entrusted to our care. We deserve God's condemnation, yet God acts with justice and mercy to redeem creation. In everlasting love, the God of Abraham and Sarah chose a covenant people to bless all families of the earth. Hearing their cry, God delivered the children of Israel from the house of bondage. Loving us still, God makes us heirs with Christ of the covenant. Like a mother who will not forsake her nursing child, like a father who welcomes the prodigal home, God is faithful still. Sisters and brothers and Christ, with God as our rock and our refuge, we have nothing of which to be afraid. So trusting in that which grounds us in love, let us come to the table where Christ offers his very self to us in these elements of bread and wine. Will you join with me now in offering our prayer of great thanksgiving? The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Foundation of the world, vessel of the universe, nursing mother, welcoming father, living stone. You chose a race, ordained a royal priesthood, made a holy nation, claimed a people as your own, and used them to bless all the families of the earth. And even when they turned away, you always accompanied them in slavery, in suffering, in struggle, in exile, you were present. You are present still, still choosing, still ordaining, still making holy, still claiming, still blessing. So we rejoice and praise you with all the saints who have gone before us. God is holy, God be blessed. God rescues, God delivers, God saves us in steadfast love. Bedrock of believers, cornerstone of the church, you helped all those who cried to you. You secured the safety of your faithful followers, suffering in the place of all sinners. We remember how you spoke on the night before your death of your father's house with many rooms and how you were going to prepare a place for us. Then you took bread blessed it, broke it, and gave it to your followers saying, this is my body broken for you. Take, eat, and do this in remembrance of me. And at that same meal, you took the cup and having blessed it and poured it out, you gave it to them saying, this is the cup of the new covenant my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Take, drink, and do this in remembrance of me. So we come, we eat and drink, and by these faithful actions we proclaim, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. By your wonder, in your word, through your wisdom, we reveal, you reveal your divine nature to us in this humble meal. Breath of life, God in flesh, founder of us all, renew in us the joy of the Easter promise, which endlessly reverberates. Christ is risen. 
He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. Friends, at this time, we invite you to share communion with the believers of every time and place and the elements which you have prepared with those gathered with you for worship in your home. By the act of the session of Forsyth Presbyterian Church, all members of our congregation's community have been authorized to serve communion to those gathered with them in their home and who are participating in worship via video. As you offer one another the bread, say, the body of Christ broken for you. As you offer one another the cup, say, the blood of Christ shed for you. Friends, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Brothers and sisters, let us now offer our, together our prayer after communion, which is printed in the bulletin. Let us pray. God, our rock and refuge, we thank you for your gifts at our tables. Use them to ground us in faith and in love. Amen. Friends, as living stones constructing spiritual buildings, we know we can build nothing of value without the gifts and grace of our triune God. All we have comes from the one who made heaven and earth. In gratitude for all the blessings of this life, we offer with joy God's tithes and our offerings. As we worship telepresently today and in the coming weeks, please remember that you can continue to support the mission and ministry of Forsyth Presbyterian Church with your financial gifts by mailing checks to P.O. Box 539, Forsyth, Georgia, 31029, or online by visiting our Square store. Your giving in this strange and new time enables us to continue the mission and ministry of Forsyth Presbyterian Church serving our congregation and our community. Thank you for all the ways you participate in and support our congregation. Let us now sing together the doxology. Let us now offer together our prayer of dedication, saying, Lord, out of love you prepare a place for us, not only in heaven, but on earth. We are never outside of your care or left to fend for ourselves. You are the way, the truth, and the life that eases the troubles of our hearts. Take these gifts, bless and use them to create places of refuge for those most in need of your peace and rest. May these offerings build spaces of love and grace here and now, so that all can celebrate together in our Father's house. Amen.
Friends, at this time, we typically share with one another the joys and concerns on our hearts. If you have a joy or a concern you would like to share, I hope you will email that to me at Forsyth Presbyterian Church at gmail.com. Please indicate in your email if you wish your prayer request to be shared with the congregation as well. And now let us offer our prayers of intercession, uniting our hearts in prayer, saying, God of resurrection, hear our prayer. For the church throughout the world, that all who profess to honor the risen Lord may be faithful in their witness and courageous in their testimony to the way of Jesus, God of resurrection, hear our prayer. For pastors, teachers, and ministers, especially the session of Forsyth Presbyterian Church, and all those called to ordered ministry, by the power of the Holy Spirit, may they seek to build the church upon Christ, the cornerstone and humbly lead in faithful service. God of resurrection, hear our prayer. For the governments of the world and their leaders, especially President Trump and Governor Kemp, may the nations dwell in peace, may compassion prevail over competition, and the action needed to alleviate the strife of all people may it be taken. God of resurrection, hear our prayer. For rain and sun in proper measure, and for abundant food and clean water for all who dwell upon the earth, God of resurrection, hear our prayer. For the sick and isolated who suffer in fear and uncertainty, may your healing flow through those who offer them care. God of resurrection, hear our prayer. For the unemployed and those in need, for any who are oppressed by wounds of the soul, God of resurrection, hear our prayer. For our neighbors, may we live together in amity. And for strangers among us, may they find us to be hospitable friends. God of resurrection, hear our prayer. For our enemies, may their sins be forgiven them, and may they find your peace. God of resurrection, hear our prayer. For our mothers, and for those who mothered and mentored us, may they know our love, respect, and gratitude. May strained or broken relationships be made whole. And may those whose mothers have died know your holy peace. God of resurrection, hear our prayer. Almighty God, your Son promised to grant whatever we ask in his name. By your Holy Spirit, empower us to minister to the world as his faithful disciples that our work may testify to what we pray and show forth your eternal glory through Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you now to sing with me our final hymn, Jesus, Lover of My Soul.
my friends, remember that faith doesn't just help. It's everything. And may you find yourselves grounded in a faith rooted in God's love so that you are prepared to meet whatever challenges or struggles you face in this time or any time with hope and with gratitude. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit dwell with you this day and always. Amen.